This is a picture of the um, top view of the stove with the legs open and uh, this is a new stove and you can see what the leg configuration is like. This is a series of the same video clip accelerated to show the changes in the leg when high heat is applied and you can see that the legs are distorting. This is a top view of uh, a new stove with the legs open and also the one on the right is a stove that has had the legs deformed from the heat and you can see that the legs have definitely changed their configuration especially note the difference in the top uh, leg that you can see there. I proceeded to uh, straighten out the legs and this is what they look like and they look fairly straight um, not exactly new but they're not too bad Again, using the new stove on the left as a comparison, the one on the right is with the straightened legs, and you can see that it's matching pretty closely to the new one. It also has some uh, titanium sleeves that I put over the areas that were getting subjected to the high heat, the thinking being that this might protect the area and keep the legs from distorting. This is a close-up of the uh, titanium sleeves. It's uh, five thousandths of an inch thick titanium foil and it's just wrapped around this. Although it seemed like a good idea, it didn't work quite as well as I had hoped and the bottom pictures show the appearance of the legs after uh, subjecting the legs to a high heat uh, environment again with the stove running and it's definitely changed the configuration so I needed a different solution. One option that I decided to try which was within my capability to uh, enact was to put a set of holes on the other side of the holes that were already installed in this housing and I was going to place the legs so that the uh, top and bottom parts were in line rather than offset as in the original design. The offset gives it a springiness but that springiness also uh, provides a torque that under again high heat conditions can cause the metal to uh, deform so using a Dremel tool and a uh, drill bit, I was able to match the holes uh, with the original. And you can see that the uh, legs have been um, put into the new holes. Uh, the other holes are the factory installed ones. The first thing I needed to do was determine if this was going to be a feasible uh, solution. So I went ahead and subjected the legs to a high heat environment with kerosene as the fuel for the stove and let it run for about five minutes. And the picture that you see there is what it looked like afterwards. I can see no difference between this and the one that was taken before I started the uh, kerosene. Unfortunately, while I solved one problem, I created another. The way that the legs are offset also changes the geometry of the top bar and when the legs are placed in line the uh, the center or the more central portion of the uh, bar is at a higher level than the more peripheral or um, um, outside portion of the bar. So I had to figure out what to do about fixing that and uh, this is just showing what one of the wires or bars or legs looks like. You can see that there's an upward slope going from outside to inside and that's not what you want. Uh, this is also just a straight edge that is placed across the stove and you can see that the um, the way that these legs are angled is not what you want. If you put a large pot on there it would tend to tilt to one side or the other. So what I decided to do was remove some metal so that I could then depress the uh, more central portion of the bar and bring it down without uh, creating any other problems. So I removed one centimeter of the um, bar. The one on the right is what it looked like before I removed the metal. Once the top bar is pushed down so that the more central portion, the part closest to the stove, is uh, depressed it also causes a change in the angle of the vertical portion so that has to be corrected by bending it uh, toward the stove so that's what that looks like after that's finished and this picture shows what a um, final version of this is supposed to look like well I was pretty happy with this so I went about uh, 
correcting the other two legs. This shows a um, measurement that one centimeter uh, mark is where the metal is going to be cut off. And uh, this is showing, uh, again, a large cut that's where the one centimeter mark was. This is with the one centimeter uh, piece essentially removed, but just adjacent to the uncut portion. And uh, the gap that you want from the top to bottom is about two and a half centimeters. One of the things that I did was I used that first leg as a template uh, so that I could match the other two legs to it. So this is what the cut but otherwise uncorrected leg looks like when it's matched up against the other one that's been, as it were, fixed. And you can see that there's some need of adjustment, but when the final adjustment is made, when they're superimposed on one another, it's somewhat difficult to tell them apart. And these are two legs that you see there in that picture. And this is all three legs. They've been slightly offset so that it's a little bit easier to compare. They're not perfect, and again, I'm not a, a machinist, and I have a limited supply of tools, but this got me close enough to where I thought I could go ahead and assemble it. And this is what the final version looks like. Again, there's still some deformities in the wires uh, or bars or whatever from the original uh, deformity. And I wasn't going to waste a lot of time trying to get this as long, get that fixed as long as I had something that was workable. I was pretty happy with the way that this uh, looked. This is a paint can that is sitting on top of the uh, stove. And uh, I think it gives pretty good support. And I also put a, um, um, a pot. This is a, uh, I think about a 1.5 liter or something like that titanium pot. One of the things that I liked about this configuration was that the legs taper now. Uh, they, they slant downward from outside to inside. And I thought that was a good idea because if you put a smaller pot on it, it'll tend to kind of the war be funneled toward the center and give it, I think, more stability than would be the case of just a flat area. That's a theory on my part, but I don't think that having the uh, legs slanting inward like this does it any harm and might do it some good. As far as changing the overall uh, appearance of the uh, stove, if anything, I don't think it hurt it and may have even improved it a little bit. The new stove is on the right and the, uh, the one that I've modified is on the left. If anything, the legs are closer to the body on this modified version compared to the uh, original especially the bottom portion of the legs, which stick out a little bit further on the um, original design. And this is the uh, top view of the um, modified stove. And uh, it shows that there's really, that these legs are definitely in line. There's really no offset at all. I have uh, made uh, Edelrid uh, aware of these changes that I've made and also the JET issue that I had presented also in this series of videos. And whether or not they will enact any of these is unknown, but I'm presenting these videos for um, the possibility that it might be of help to the people who are either anticipating getting one of these uh, very nice stoves. I, I like this one a lot. It is a very compact, very well-designed and manufactured little stove. Um, but uh, once these little minor issues, for the most part, are addressed, I think this is one of the best little stoves I've ever seen. Uh, I hope Edward um, makes some of these minor changes, and I think it will be an overall improvement.